Number 11, professional application. Suppose a child drives a bumper car head-on into the side rail, which exerts a force of 4,000 newtons on the car for 0.2 seconds. Letter A, what impulse is imparted by this force? All right, so remember, impulse is the same as change in momentum. All right, so therefore, I'm going to highlight this equation over on the right-hand side. I'm going to draw it over here on the left. So the change in momentum, a.k.a. the impulse, is equal to the force applied multiplied by the time over which that force acts. So all I need to know to find the... Uh, change in momentum is just the force and the time, okay? But one other thing, let's also take a look at where the force acts or what direction this force is acting. So here's our little picture, right? The car is coming in and hitting the wall. I'm assuming it's traveling to the right. It's coming in then with some initial velocity to the right-hand side as well. Now, if we think about uh, what force the wall is going to impart on the car, right? Because the important system here is the car. Uh, what direction will that force be? The wall is going to import, impart a force to the left, right? It's essentially going to push the car back equal but opposite to what the car comes in with, right? So that being the case, you know, the force here we have to plug in as a negative value. Okay, it's not going to, it doesn't come from any of the math. We have to look at the uh, picture and the dynamics of what's happening to get that value. If we don't uh, figure that value out to be a negative here, we're going to be wrong. So plug it in now. So the force now is a negative 4,000. Why? Because again, it's pointing in the left-handed direction. And I just so happen to take the velocity here pointing to the right. Okay. If you frame the problem the other way, right, you had your car here traveling to the, to the left, then the initial velocity would have been negative, And then the force would have been the in the right-handed direction, you still would have been fine. We would have gotten the same answers, but you just have to be consistent, okay? So the time here was 0.2 seconds, and now I can simply just plug it all in, right? Uh, this should be negative 800, negative 800 uh, kilogram meter per second. And that would be the impulse, aka the change in momentum. So that takes care of letter A. Why don't we look at letter B? Oops. Find the final velocity of the bumper car if its initial velocity was 2.8 meters per second and the car plus the driver have a mass of 200 kilograms. You may neglect friction between car and floor. So let it be now, all right? Uh, we know that the change in momentum, right, was equal to negative 800, so let's just write that. So the change in momentum of the car is equal to negative 800 kilogram meter per second. Now that should also make sense, right, because the momentum of the car as it's coming in, right, it should be decreasing, it's hitting a it's hitting a wall, okay? So the mo total momentum of the car better be going down. It can't possibly be, be uh, increasing. That means the speed would be increasing. So again, it also makes logical sense based on the direction of the force that we talked about before. Anyway, so now what I can do is I can expand this change in momentum, right, to be uh, the final momentum minus the initial momentum, okay, is equal to eight, uh, negative 800. Great. And now I can expand on these a little bit. Remember, momentum is equal to mass times velocity. So therefore, the mass times the final velocity minus the mass times the initial velocity will equal negative 800. Okay. And these two terms have mass in common, right? So we can pull them out. So mass uh, times the final velocity minus the initial velocity is equal to negative 800. And if I want to find the final velocity, which is what the question is asking, first let's divide out the mass. So we have the final velocity minus the initial velocity is equal to 800, negative 800 over m. And then I would just have to add the initial velocity, right, to the right-hand side. So that, that makes our final formula now negative 800 over the mass uh, plus the initial velocity, okay? So to be more specific, the final velocity of the car should equal negative 800, because that's the impulse, um, divided by the mass of the car plus the initial velocity of the car. And we know those variables, so let's just plug them all in, okay? So it's negative 800 over the mass of the car, well, and plus the driver. So that's going to be 200 kilograms. And then plus the initial velocity of the car, which again, remember, I took my initial velocity to be to the right, and therefore this value of 2.80 is going to be positive. Okay, so now let's just calculate. So we have negative uh, 800 divided by 200 plus 2.8 and here we get a negative 1.2, okay? So negative 1.2 meters per second. So what does that negative mean? It just means a direction. It means that now after the 
car makes contact with this wall and the force applied in this direction acts for 0.2 seconds, the final velocity of the car now will be uh, 1.2 meters per second, just pointing in that left-handed direction. All right, guys, thanks so very much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe, and I look forward to helping you with the next question. Have a great day.